So would you rather be in Chet or Wimby's rookie year situation? Me personally, Wimby. One, one's 18, one's 21. Both with the same numbers, <clears throat> right? So <laughs> I'd rather be the 18-year-old. You, you always lean towards the young. Averaging the same thing as the 21-year-old because when I'm 21, most likely I'm going to be an all-star. Absolutely. So Wimby, 19, turns 20 in January, just, okay. to point, just letting you know. And then one, so one's going to be turning 22, right? Chet. Chet, 21, turns 22 in May. Chet has, what, a two-year advantage? Because uh, he did one college He, he red shirt, yeah, he red shirt. But when he's been playing pro in France. So wait, 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 wait. He red shirt? He, a rookie red shirt. No, last I'm year. talking about he did one year of college. Yeah, one year of college. Then he red shirt. Red shirt, and now he's a two year advantage yeah. already. But when be playing pro in France for, mm-hmm. for several years, I'm just saying he's been but playing. But what I'm saying is age wise, what was Chet doing at 19? Yeah. He's in college. Yeah. Right, so I'm going to take the younger one doing the same thing as, as the second year pro. Yeah, Wimby. And you got to, so people, to put it in context with the shooting percentages, right? Chet has somebody who's creating for him, giving him, he getting easy buckets, wide open threes. SGA is creating a lot of attention. Mm-hmm. They got better players around him, so he's, he's not playing and not having to force shots. No. At times, mm-hmm. so don't get caught up in that percentages yeah. and all that shit. People. It's a different. I mean, look. yeah, because you know, yeah, I, mean, yeah, yeah. I, I don't want people, like people, people, people hear the percentage like, damn, we be struggling. Yeah, yeah. Like, damn, he why he keep shooting threes? Like, yeah, because he fucking ain't got nobody getting wide open fucking threes. <laughs> He's more or less the guy on that Spurs squad. Yeah, they like the I mean, they've got a good young crew, but the play the other day, SGA drove. They they used fucking the teams what they knew they was gonna do. SGA drove, everybody collapsed. <laughs> yeah. Just knew it. Came off, Chet wide open with mm-hmm. three. I'm All saying day. so it's that shit. Yeah, but yeah, Chet obviously in a more, yeah. a, a less stressed Yeah, but, you know, no, but Wimby's, yeah, man, he's in a situation where he can't lose. I think just because what's around him, situational, organization. Yeah. Yeah, it's, he's younger. Just learning this, having been in the NBA system for a year. Hmm. It all matters, hmm. but I have an interesting take on this. I, I, I know yeah, you do. Taking so let's, that let's, little chat play, chat playing well, but yeah, I'm, I'm going Wimby. Yeah, I'm, I'm, and this is in this conversation. Yeah, I'm gonna go. <clears throat> My uh, good friend Trev Trout uh, gave me some good insight. You know what I'm saying on on this particular situation between Chet and Wimby, and how it plays out from his perspective is if you play Wimby the minutes that he should be playing, his numbers are going to go down. It's going to look bad for him as a player because he's going to struggle. The more minutes he plays, shooting percentage is going to go down. He's going to look like he has a lot of flaws in his game. So if you restrict his minutes, it helps the fans not see the holes in the game that he has to transition into from overseas to here and being able to adjust to the game in the first year. Chet's already an American player. He already played one year of college basketball. He's familiar with the rookies that he's playing with. And he knows a little bit about the game as far as the NBA sets and all these. His adjustments already. You got a year of that. He got a year of that, right? So when Trev mentioned it, it's like, all right, how do the Spurs mitigate Wimby looking like a bust if he comes in the league? Well, you restrict his minutes. You, you make sure when he plays, he plays well, plays well enough where we can say, oh, 16 and 7 is good for a rookie, right? But if you're not playing him 30-plus minutes... He's playing 30 minutes a game right now. 30, right at 30. Right at 30 right. So if it's a 48-minute game, you got him at 30, and you, you got the minutes restriction thing going, it's like, okay, if you played him more and he actually was out there getting, finding his comfort zone, he would be making more mistakes. He would be taking more shots and missing more shots and getting, getting acclimated. And I think to Trav's point is, you know, Chet's not going to have that type of pressure. Yeah. He's got SGA, he's got Giddy, he's got a bunch of other players that can actually, you know, yeah. keep the pressure off of him. So I think that just with that side alone, I got to go at Wimby just because... He got way more pressure against him knowing that if he did play more minutes, he could look worse than he does now. And the fact that he's playing less minutes, he's playing 
a little bit better, so he looks better. I mean, but 30 well, minutes well, a game. But, for, I, I, but, 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 but how many more minutes can he fucking pass? He's only going to play more, like 33 minutes, if that. Yeah, I mean, so we're looking at guys like him beat other guys in the numbers. league. It's three or four minutes. Yeah, it's going to be the same minutes. fucking numbers. How many more shots? And he can't look no worse than he's looking in the minutes he's getting. Well, it's, it's how, how they started him off with the minutes. Yeah. It's right? like you know what I'm saying? They, they started but letting him play a lot. He has, okay. dog, dude's playing him for one. Listen, dude's Hold playing on, him. All, you know, there's a 38, there's a 36 minute per what's the name? Yeah. So if uh, Wimby was playing 36 minutes, right, he'll be averaging 23. If Chet plays 36 minutes, he'll be averaging 21. Because they're both playing the same amount of numbers, they're, they're actually both playing 30 minutes. So. The fact that one is averaging, what, 19, one's averaging 17. Wimby averaging 19, Chet averaging 17, right? But I'm not going off of the point averages. I'm talking about everything else that's around the game. You know, three-point percentage, field goal percentage, turnovers, you know, offensive rebounds, defensive rebounds, all the little things that could help his plus-minus when he's on the floor. Like, his plus-minus when he's on the floor go up if he played more efficient minutes but he's not playing efficient minutes. He's just playing those minutes where he he can play, you know, 28, 30 here, 31 here. But they're here. both doing the same thing. See, what you mean? But they're both playing 30 exact minutes. We're talking Thunder. Thunder yeah, averaging 119 points per game. They're yeah. sixth in the league. Spurs are like 25th. So, so my thing is, we don't know what Chet would have looked like last year to have fucking rookie, a real rookie to compare to. Right, right. So this is not fair to Wimby to be comparing him yeah. to a second-year guy any fucking way. Let's start there, but... Mm -hmm. <laughs> but let's, let's call that's it what it is. We don't know what he would look like what, last year as coming in the second pick with a target on his back and everybody motherfucking attacking him night in, night out. Right. But we also don't know what Chet would have looked like if he would have played a year but ho, ho, pro France wait, or whatever. We're acting like Chet is averaging 28. Yeah. I'm, I'm just He's saying. averaging 17. He, he is. Wimby's averaging 19. So as a right. real rookie yeah. last year, I'm just saying <laughs> as a rookie, if he would have been, I don't think he would have averaged 17 last no. year in his rookie year. Not even close. He ain't averaging it this year. So, shit. The seven, seven, but seven, but it's, who, just, it's who's on his team. It's why think man. about it. If, if Wimby got two other primary big-time scores, a first-team All-NBA in front of, like, It'll it's, be a, a, it's a different... But, but if Wimby has that, is he still averaging 20 again? I think yes. he, I think he, he averaged more. Yes. yes. It'd be, he might be averaging more. Okay, look. If he had SGA on his team, you, he's getting easier buckets. Yes. You think? Do you think those numbers go up? Absolutely. Okay. He's playing in, with nobody around him. He's getting wide open threes. Yes. He's getting wide open. Like this, the efficiency this, goes the, up. It goes up. He's not shooting this, forty-three and twenty-eight. Yes, this, not at all. This is how we do it, right? When when people say, "Yeah, I want Chet," this is how you look at the situation. One is 19, one is 21. What did the 21-year-old look like when he was at 19 years old, right? I can tell you this, he wasn't in the NBA averaging 19, right? Now, at 21, we see what Chet looks like. What the fuck is Wimby gonna look like at 21? Two more years. What is Wimby gonna look like at 21? That's who you're gonna judge Chet against, right? You're judging him against an older player now. At the same age, when Wimby gets to 21, who is he going to be? Is he going to be averaging 17 and 10? Or is he going to be averaging about 25, 26, and 12? Mm. Yeah. There's your, there's your fact. What do you think Chet is going to, I mean, what do you think Wimby's going to look like in two more years at that age, 21? When we're saying 21 turning 22. And you're saying it without a player like SGA. Like he, it, Just period. What, are you gonna, mm. what do you think he's going to look like? It's not even going to be a comparison. They're not even going to be on the same planet. Because at 19, when they both was 19, they're not on the same planet. Right. One was in high school, college, playing, playing that style. One is in the NBA. They're not, even, they're not on the same planet right now. We're just judging it because they're both rookies. We're not looking. You got to take age as a factor. One is in the NBA with all this pressure. The other one was getting into college. And let's see these sports media people. These assholes that vote on this rookie of the year, let's see what they do. They're going to make it tight just for, the, just for the sake of making it. And when you present it like that, I think it makes a lot more sense in Wimby's case is a lot more compelling. Yeah. <laughs> but also from the Spurs standpoint, if I know the franchise or the team is trash this year, even playing Wimby 30 minutes a game, like, do you take that risk? Because you're more concerned, obviously, for his long-term growth future. We've never seen a 7'4 dude 
doing the shit he's doing out there on the court. And that was Trev. That was Trev's point too. Yeah. He he was making that same assessment. Yeah. Like, what do you play him more? Because I would grab you risk. Do you risk yeah, his like, stats? Playing him thirty like, minutes, man. You got to He has to be on the floor in yeah. order to be better. To learn, he's averaging too many turnovers now. Yeah. You can't teach him <clears throat> how not to turn the ball over by not playing him. All right. You like, got to play him and I'm watch saying, film you, with him. Tell you, him. You got, you got to play him 30, 30 minutes a night. And do you hold it or do you try to increase it no, as the year goes on? 30 or? minutes is fine, man. Yeah. Steady steady like, at 30? That's, that's what I said. People, so what are you going to 32, 33? Come on. Like, it's the same. 30 to 33 like, minutes like, is like, the uh, same uh, thing, Pinch, uh, Pinchero, was it? Or Paolo? Paolo? Yeah. But Banchero, um, how many minutes did he, did he play last year as a rookie? Let me pull it up. I'm pretty sure he was like 32, 33. <laughs> he played some good minutes. Like, people don't understand, like, age is really a big factor in it all. And when you're evaluating your talent and you see who's worth more, you have to use their age because their numbers at, when you're comparing them, is not the same thing. Like, I remember Michael, was it Michael Carter Porter or Michael? Mike, yeah, Michael. Michael Carter Williams. Mike, Michael Carter Williams, right? Remember, he came in the NBA one rookie of the year, right? They traded him. And said, we're going younger. And people didn't understand what the fuck he was. He was 21 years old. He was 21 when he came in. He run a rookie, he won rookie of the year. Everybody he was compared to and came in a draft with was 18 years old. So when they're doing advanced stats, yeah. they're looking at like, well, this is what you averaged at 21. 16, 8, and 9, right? right? This is your numbers. Well, yeah, you're better than your rookie class, but you're not better than 21-year-olds. So check. Let's grade you against 21-year-olds, Yeah. right? Some of those guys are already all-stars, already all-NBA players. That's your, your age group. Wimby's in the 19-year-old age group, right? Your number, you're balling, but let's not get it twisted. You're 21 turning 22. Where's your peers? Your peers is not rookies. Your peers is 21 turning 22. Some of those guys are already all-NBA players. All NBA players, all stars already. And to your question, Paolo Malcolm averaged Brogdon. 34 minutes huh? per game Malcolm as rookie Brogdon. year. It's dipped down to like 33.1. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. yeah. Paolo is at 34. Right. And how old is Paolo? He's <laughs> just now turning 21. Let's double check. Google has every He's answer. At, He's he was at 34. He's 20. He was at 34 points a game last season. Yeah, he turned 21 year. November 12th. Dude, that's Chet's. That's Chet's matchup. That's his. That's his comp. That's his comp. Who else is 21? And there's an All Star that's Anthony, 21. Anthony, but we all know that Anthony Edwards. Anthony, Anthony Edwards. Edwards. 21, 22. Yeah. Mellow Ball. Fair. So Ant tw uh, just turned 22 in August. Yeah. Yeah. And how many times he's a two-time All Star? Yep. Scotty Barnes, 21. LaMelo just turned 22 in August. So that's, that's his group. All-stars, all-NBA players. That's who Chet is actually competing with. He ain't competing with Wimby. That's, that's the media. They, they do that shit. What was his pick? Was Chet number one? His number one. Two. Two. Number two. two. It was a two pick. So he was with, Paolo, he was with Paolo, wasn't he? Yeah, Paolo he came, was the one, he was two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They came mm. out that year. Obviously just but even then, but, like, but think about it. Those are rookie, but they're... Think about the people who's been in the league a little bit longer. That's their age group. Yeah. So that's you comparing Ant Chet Man. to the Paolo. That's I mean, what you. Yeah. The people he, but, but the people saying, he should be. Yeah. No, but I'm saying even Ant Man, the Ant Man and Mellow, Lamelo Ball. What? That's his. Wise that's his, Wise that's his yeah. age group. Yeah. yeah. So when he walks around, and say, "Yeah, I'm," he can't say I'm the best rookie. If you win rookie, can you say you're the best 21, 22 year old? That's that you Cooper know? flag shit. So they pointed out that Brandon Miller also 21. Yeah, That's Steve is old. So Brent, even with Brandon Miller, your group is Ant Man, and those are the Megatrons of your of your age. That's crazy. So you, you've made this point a lot. And it's funny I even see it on the high school side now because you take a guy. Oh, they're both seniors, but one true to his grade, one you know spent a lot more time in junior high school than he needed to. <laughs> I'm just saying, but you can't compare those two dudes. And I think that's oh. what the, the the issue we run into a lot is. Hey, they're both rookies. And like you've, you've pointed out several times, Chet's a redshirt rookie. Mm -hmm. He got a, a year of NBA you know, program with the Thunder. Obviously, he was hurt coming back, but he got to be around it for a whole year, got to running, learn everything. Running the same, the practicing, running the same sets. Mm. Got the same coach, running the same sets. So he has no learning curve. Yeah. 
He gets to go out and play freely. Yep. Mm -hmm. He don't got to think, oh, well, what's this call? Well, oh, shit, what's four down, twist, what's... Mm -hmm. He don't have that to think about because he was already working on that. He's already heard them, them terms. He's already been in the film sets. He's already been at the trainers Absolutely. lifting, yep. working on his body. So now... I can just go hoop, and I got a fucking first team All NBA guy over here. Man, makes my job a lot easier. No Let's way. talk about Blake Griffin just a little bit. <laughs> Obviously, he had to redshirt his rookie year Same as well. Shit, man. Do Do you think those guys should be considered for rookie of the year no. awards? No. Or they should get the no. Year? No. <laughs> You're not a rookie, man. Listen, you missed you, it. You missed your. You missed it. You missed you got your hurt, rookie you got hurt, year. Whatever it was, you missed. You missed it. your rookie year. We all got into Because you still got your check for your rookie. Absolutely, you, you know got paid. Saying? They didn't hold that motherfucking check, did they? <laughs> so I think if, we if, drafted if, you, but we not gonna pay you the next year. Come on, because so you got rookies hurt. like, nah, don't give me the check. And yeah, then I'm getting yeah, my first yeah. check coming in this year. Maybe they can still guarantee he ain't on that motherfucking that rookie that first year <laughs> rookie salary. I guarantee them numbers on number two, that that year two salary. Mm -hmm. Like, let's not come on, man. But that's the thing. Listen, they're both good. They're both absolutely doing what they're gonna do, but. They're not on the same planet right now. Yeah, absolutely. Right? They're not on the same planet because they're not the same age. Right? They're not. <clears throat> Talk about that rookie shit, so, though. But like, people don't... For that, that competition of rookie of the year, it's unfair for Wimby because if Chet is his only competition, take Chet out and who, who are you going to give it to? I mean, you got some other. I mean, you got Zer Thompson. I mean, close, no, nobody. nobody. Nobody's close. Nobody's nobody. Nobody. So they literally only putting Chet in here just to make it for the discourse seem like conversation. Somebody. And no, but that, but that, but that's what I'm saying. I don't. I don't. I don't go by where you got drafted. I go by the age. And right now, Chet is behind. He's behind his group, right? When we talk about 24 year old, who is the baddest 24 year old in the world? It's Luca. Yeah. Right? Tatum is going to be the baddest man in his age group. Whoever is 23 is going to be the baddest man in his age group. Right? At 21, who's the baddest man in their age group? Ant-Man. Yep. Right? So if you're 21, if you a rookie coming in at 21, if you if you in college still, Ant-Man is your man. Is Godzilla for y'all. <laughs> right? <laughs> so I don't care. I don't give a fuck if you talking about y'all yeah, rookie of the year. <clears throat> He's sitting down there looking at you like, <laughs> mm. <laughs> are you still down there? Mm. Y'all still down there? <laughs> Come see me. <laughs> and you, you got to look up like, oh, I ain't even in, I, I ain't even, I ain't even good enough to come up there I'm yet. Still on big my bro. deal. <laughs> <laughs> Call niggas the same yeah. age, big bro. Ant-Man Godzilla for 21-year-olds. <laughs> yeah, that's like. Right? That. It ain't Wimby. You over here talking about Wimby. Like I said, y'all over here comparing Wimby to Chet, Chet, Godzilla of your age group. Is that man named Ant Man? Yeah. Jump up. Get get your weight up. <laughs> Jump up. The best ninth role in the world right now is Wimby. For sure. And his when you say we, they know who the best rookie, because after your rookie year, <laughs> it's age. They're gonna judge your ass off your age. Yeah. So when when Wimby get his max, all you all y'all who's 21 right now as a rookie. They judge you off of what you did because you're going to be 24. They're going to say, hey, because he's going to be 22. He's going to get the max. And y'all sitting there trying to fight for your deal. It ain't off of his number. It's off of where you compare to the other 24-year-olds when you're doing your deal. I don't think we've been doing it that way, though. I think no, you just, you no, just no, no. set it up. No, no, the NBA do it. I'm talking about us. I'm talking about like... No, yeah. Like, we haven't really been like you I, being with your age. What's the funny? I, when, I, when I sat down with Michael... And we did the deal. Carter, he said everything I've been saying the whole time. He said it. He was like, man, look, I want rookie of the year. I'm coming back for my year. And they said, yeah, we, gonna, we need to go in a different direction. We need to go younger. I said, yeah, I'm only on my sophomore year. He's like, yeah, but, mm, you know, you, you, you're 22 right now. Like, where, where, where are you comparing to your age group? He's like, this is my second year. Yeah, I get your second year. <laughs> your age group, we're, we're 22 year olds. They're already all-stars, two-time all-stars. Yeah. So yeah, we gon' we gonna go younger. I, mean, I think that's even true for your case too, Gil. You class of '99 could have easily been class of 2000. You know, yeah. You born '82, like. But that, but that, that's what I'm saying, man. Like it's li listen, the holding back, the holding back is hurting you at that next level. Damn, man. I'm it's hurting you at the different. next level. Like when you talk about contracts here, <coughs> LeBron just <coughs> came in with who? Melo. Right, who's one year older, Dwayne Wade, right? Think about the money that 
being 18 versus 21 will look like, right? Like when y'all maxing out, his first max is at 21 on your rookie deal. You're 24. He's 24, 27, 27, 30, 30, 33, 33. You ain't maxing at 36, Man. right? You retiring. He's still, go you know what I mean? Yep. And it's the same, the reason LeBron James outbeat his class because he was younger than the rest of his class. Well, just think, <laughs> think about preparation, though. Like, if we as, as players are prepping, we look at it like our years. Mm -hmm. We're looking at it like, oh, I'm just in my first year. I'm in my third year. I'm in my fourth year. He in his fourth year. But when you change it to age... I can't necessarily look at the same guy next to me that's in the same year because he might be older than me and he should be looking at a metric older than him. Like, oh, I got to be in the 26-year-old range mm -hmm. instead of me, same year, but I'm at the 24 because he did two years extra in college. So he's supposed to have been out earlier than me, <clears throat> but I'm still comparing myself to him because we're at the same year. Mm -hmm. If the players change their dynamic of looking at how to come into it like, nah, it's my age group. Yep, they 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 won't they won't they won't fuck up their money. Mm. I remember when when Buddy Hill, I had to break it down to Buddy Hill when Buddy Hill was upset about what he got offered, and I had to break it down to how I see it because how I understand how they do it. Right. And I said, well, hold on, you're better than your your class, but your class is three years younger than you. <sighs> right. You can't compare yourself to them. You got to compare yourself when I'm trying to sign you, Hill. Your age, what have you done compared to everybody else the same age? Right. Right? You're 20, like Cat, he's an all-star. He's an all-NBA player, right? You know, um, you know Devin Booker, all these, uh, Beal, this is your group, right? So I can't say you're a max player because these are the max. Yes. These are the max. Yeah, you're better than the rookies, but this is your group. These are the max players in your group, right? So now I got to find somebody that's in the same situation, at the same numbers, what right. you're doing. And I was like, all right, C.J. McCullough, right? He's averaging about 20-something. He hasn't made an all-star, hasn't made an all-NBA, same age. This is his contract. This is the same money. This is who they're, comp when they're looking at and they're giving you an offer, this is who they're offering you to. Yeah. So you got to look at this player. And when he understood that, he was like, you're right. And he made his... his his Did competition, he? his competition pool was being saturated because he was looking at people he knew he was better than. Yep. He's like, "Oh, I know, I, I'm better, yeah. than, but because you're older than them, mm -hmm. you're, you should be better than them because you've had more time to be." Uh -huh. So now you look at the people at your at your age, you're looking around, you're like, "Oh shit, McCullough and them, they, you look up to them. Yep. You're like, oh, I'm supposed to be at they, yeah, you're yeah. supposed to be at they level." That age, that, age, that age is a, is a, is a oh, motherfucker. Oh, it's real. I hadn't said in them, <laughs> in them meetings in them front offices and heard them say it. Mm -hmm. Looking at guys, looking at, hey, oh, this guy can play. They said, I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he was born in what year? Yeah. They got that, this, I mean, they got your name, your school, your height, and the year you was fucking born as part of the evaluation. Yes, sir. <laughs> Crazy. With your height and the school, they got your year you was born, man. Like that, like that blew my mind sitting there watching that on the whiteboard, getting ready for the draft. I'm yeah. sitting there like, the fuck they got to do year was born up there for? And they just said, oh, it matters. Mitch Kupchak explained it to me. When he said what he said to me, I, you know, they told me at 28, I said, and he said, well, the reason why is because the owner if he's going to pay you a one-year deal for a million dollars, that's five million dollars on, on his books. That one million is five on his books. So you literally got to be worth five million, not the one million. So at 28, are you worth the five million off the books? Mm -hmm. And now you got to start reevaluating as a player what they look at now because you never knew that. You just think it's a one-year deal. I should be able to get a one-year deal for a million? Cool. It's like, nah, it's off the books now. It's, it's, book, it's bookkeeping. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, are you worth the 10 million that we, we trying to get off the books? We're going to get a 40-year-old Steve Nash, and we know we can pay him less, but we, we can bring in fans, we can bring in this, we can bring in that, but we're not going to waste no money on a player that we may not play, that we may not give a real opportunity to because it's 5 million off the books. So this got to be a good investment, blah, 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 blah. So 
the age definitely plays a part when the players actually know that shit. So we asked the chat, who's your pick for rookie of the year? They go 51% Wimby, 49% Chet. So we'll see how it plays yeah, out. But He must have got smart because that yeah. motherfucker was like an 80-20 Chet before. Really? <laughs> no, but, no, but it, it's something that, you know, people don't really understand. They really just think it's about numbers, right? They think about them like it's, it's, it's you, they value youth more. Right, they they value you. How long can I have this player for? You know how long? Like how is he compared to everybody in his age group? That that is a value. So that's why like people get really fucked up on their contracts and like man, I'm worth more than this. How did this man get paid? You're not looking at his age. Right. Right. You're not looking at his age. His age is what's doing this. So they're like, you know, you average 22, he averages 18, but he got all his money. You're like, yeah, but because when you was when you was 18, you was averaging two. <laughs> you was averaging two at 18, right? Even though y'all the same, you know, at 18, you was averaging two. He's averaging this. And that's what they're, so they're doing that advance on the younger guys. Yep. When you old, older, your numbers need to hit right now. If you played four years, you better come in and play today. Yeah. You don't have a three, four year curve, yep. right? So Wimby has a ch- he has a curve. He has one year to do whatever. Chet, you got to play a little bit better right now. Yeah. Right. You got to you got a ball right now. When Dame Lillard came in, Dame had to be great today. Yeah. He didn't have, you know, 18, 19 to fuck around and all that. Like when four years of college. The baby. whole thing with Kuzma and, and, and uh, Bi. Yeah. Right. Oh, Kuzma's better today. Yeah. <laughs> Just right now. <laughs> today. Right now, like like Magic Johnson, Magic Johnson, this is the difference between a basketball savant and an agent, right? Magic Johnson did the same trade, the same trade, but had B.I. still in L.A. and Kuzma gone. Because this kid is only 18 years old, 19 years old. By the time he's 21 with Kuzma's age, he'd be all-star, which when they traded him wow. at 21, he was all-star. Wow. Right, same thing with D'Angelo. He was young, so the 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 dra- Lakers draft picks, the the youngest all stars that Lakers drafted was Magic, D'Angelo Russell, and Bi. And the, when they made it, they wasn't even part of the Lakers organization. Wow. Those are the two youngest wow. that they drafted. Wow. 